Our lives are mostly affected by the way we think things are, not the way they are. The way we think they are affects us most. Poor thinking habits keeps most people poor. Not poor working habits. Most people work hard, but they don't think hard. The mind is like a factory, a mental factory. And whatever you think about all day long pours ingredients into this mental factory. Can you imagine dumping a barrel of trash into this mental factory every day and coming out with a rich, dynamic, positive life? It can't be done. And you decide what goes into your mental factory. Don't let anybody just dump anything they want to in your mental factory because you've got to live with the results. Everything starts with thought. So you must be wise and careful what you think about because that starts everything. You got to be wise and careful. Mr. Shoff gave me one of the greatest phrases when I first met him when he said, Jim, every day stand guard at the door of your mind. How important. Stand guard at the door of your mind. So this is called major, what we ponder and what we think about sets the course of our life. It's like the set of the sail that's taking us somewhere. Let me give you a good question to write down. Where are my thoughts taking me? This is a biggie question. Where are my thoughts taking me? These are some of the things you want to make sure of. You might be able to be casual about some things, but here's some things not to be casual about. My philosophy is taking me somewhere. Big question, where? The accumulation of equity will either be there or won't be there. Life accumulates. And I'm either accumulating debt that I'll be sorry for or I'm accumulating value that I'll be happy about. Words nourish the mind. Words give life. What a man reads pours massive ingredients into his mental factory and the fabric of his life is built from those ingredients. You would not believe what some people have got in their house to read. Just a few little pointers on the mind. Here's number one, it needs to be nourished. It needs to be fed. There's an Old Testament phrase that says, humans cannot live just on bread alone or food alone. Dogs can, a crocodile can, a spider can, humans cannot exist just on food. Here's what it says. Humans also need words. Words nourish the mind. Words give life. Words create insight. Because there's more than one way to see. If we see with our eyes, we call that sight. But there's another way to see called insight. That's why we come, gather for a couple of days attend the classes, go to the training, read the books, do all the stuff, is to develop more insight. Letting our mind be nourished to think, ponder, and wonder, and conceive ideas, projects, purpose, give structure to something for the future, whether it's better health or better career, better future. Next, the mind needs to be exercised. We talked a bit about that earlier. Exercise by debate. Exercise by reading both sides of the debate, both sides of the question. Major life issues, major political issues. Don't leave yourself out of the great debate. One, the mind needs to be nourished by ideas. Second, it needs to be refined and stimulated and exercised by debate. We need both sides of the human drama represented. The reason why the Bible is such a classic book in studying all kinds of stories is because the Bible is full of stories on both sides, the evil side and the good side. The Bible said, Old Testament said, this king came to power and he was a good king. and He ruled for 18 years. And then it says the next king came to power and he was a bad king and he put up idols. He became the bad king. So the it reads good king, bad king, showing both sides of the human spectrum and drama. Some stories that we read in the Bible of people to admire, others are people to despise. 
In your library, you need a book on Gandhi and you need a book on Hitler. One book to show you how noble someone's aspirations can be and the other book to show you how despicable and how evil someone's goals can be. Both sides we study good and evil, one we love and one we hate. We study illness, we study health. Someone says, well, you can't study the negative things. You have to study the negative things. You have to give voice to and mind to and time to both sides of the issue so that you can strengthen your side of the argument. In raising our kids, we have to pose both sides. What's the dangerous side and the safe side? In one of the seminars that I'm sure some of you have attended, I talk about philosophy that makes the difference. Philosophy does two things, each person's personal philosophy. So jot this down. Our personal philosophy does two things. One, helps us to see the dangers on one side so we can avoid or minimize those. Then our personal philosophy needs to be developed so we can see the opportunities on the other side so we can maximize those. And for the balance of your life, that's gonna be the twin challenge in developing ideas and philosophy and strengthening all of it so that you can avoid the dangers, maximize the opportunities. Because the dangers never go away. The dangers to our ship of state called the country, the danger to the enterprise, the danger to the corporation. Dangers always lurk both inside and out. Dangers lurk on the inside of our own mind. When I was a kid, they used to have those little cartoons of a little boy with a gremlin on one side and a little angel on the other side. And the little devil, a little gremlin said, go ahead and do it, it's okay. Little angel said, no, no, no. So when kids are young, they've got this debate to engage in, should I or shouldn't I? One voice says, go ahead, and the other one says, no, no. So we hope as the years pass and as the classes pass, and as we go from grade one to grade two to grade five to grade 10, we will learn more, as Abraham said, to listen to the better angels of our nature, to appeal to our conscience and let our conscience help along with God and whatever else you belong in that has good influence on helping to make right decisions, avoiding the evil one, avoiding the danger, the dark side, and appeal to ourselves to engage in the positive side the opportunities. The battle of the mind is significant for us every day. What to think, what not to think. My mentor, Mr. Shove said, stand guard at the door of your mind. And you decide what enters. You decide what to fill up your mind with because it becomes the material with which you build your future. So engaging the mind to make rational decisions about life. Beware of the thief on the street that's after your purse, but also beware of the thief in your mind that's after your promise. The thief in your mind that says you're too short, you're too tall, you've never done it before. What makes you think you can do it now? It's not going to work for you. Someone else could find the book, you'll never find the book. If you found the book, you wouldn't read it. If you did read it, you wouldn't understand it. That's stuff that goes on in our mind. So jot down this key phrase, it's one of the best for the day. Whatever you do, don't become a victim of yourself. As you engage in this debate, what to eat, what not to eat, where to go, where not to go, what to say, what not to say, what to do, what not to do. Make sure that you strengthen the positive side of this argument with yourself so that day by day you become healthier, day by day you become stronger, day by day you become wiser. Day by day, you build a better shield and immunity, an inside immunity to ward off disease, but an outside immunity to ward off all the negative and all the trash and all the stuff that would not enhance your personal development nor your promise for the future. So be careful. If somebody says to me, these eggs are rotten, I'm not gonna make an omelet and try it. I'm gonna take their word for it. So feed the mind, exercise the mind, and build your library. I recommend three books that were recommended to me when I started my library when I was 25 years old in those accelerated days of personal development for me, about seven years worth. 
so fantastically changed my bank account, changed my income, revolutionized my future. With the foundation my parents gave me, meeting Mr. Shof at age 25, I'm telling you, it's been a journey for me like no other ever since. Then I've had mentors along the way. I'm telling you, that keep my mind stimulated, that keep my interest keen, that help me to evaluate and to weigh what is good, what is okay, what is better, and what is prosperous in terms of your life mentors and that first mentor i had recommended these three books first was the bible now i had an advantage there because my parents made sure i was a pretty good scholar by age 19. a good book to serve you all of your life one of the major sources of ideas stories poetry history a major source for stimulation next he recommended the book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Think and grow. Good words, think and grow and rich. I went for it, got the book, paid less than 50 cents for it. Some of the ideas in it changed my life. Next, Chof recommended the book The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson. Helped me become a millionaire by age 32. Totally changed my economic future. Just the ideas in a simple little book. Amazing. Then he rec recommended something for me to listen to by Earl Nightingale called The Greatest Secret. That was my listening library to begin with. The Greatest Secret by Earl Nightingale. So your listening library and your visual library next now is your reading library and we won't go through a whole list of the best books but here's a good book to get if you want a good list of the best books it's called how to read a book simple how to read a book by adler chief editor of the encyclopedia britannica mortimer adler he wrote a book called six great ideas that's excellent he wondered, are ideas tangible? Are ideas real? Or are they nothing? But he wrote this book along with a, another author, How to Read a Book. Now, if you master this book, you can get so much more from a book. Now, it's a kind of a tough book to get through, but it'll give you some ideas on how to take a book and get the most out of it. Take a book and get the most out of it. But in this book is also a list of what he calls are the greatest books ever written. And I've used that book, that list, as a centerpiece for my library. It's got the classics, which I missed. I only went to one year of college, so I missed a whole bunch of stuff. I started making up for that by collecting these best books ever written. Interestingly enough, on that list is Old and New Testament. On every scholar's list, East or West. You just can't miss those as major sources. In addition to that, there's a book called Lessons of History, written by Durant. And I offer it because it's one of the classic writings of all time. You may not agree with his premise, but you certainly have to agree that it's one of the best well-written books ever. He and his wife wrote about 11 volumes on civilization. Take a speed reading course, you can get through those. But this little book, Lessons of History, is sort of a summary of their ideas on, on history. It's a classic. Then a classic I think most everybody's got is called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen, where each sentence is a, a seminar. And you may not agree with his premise either in certain instances. You don't want to read just what you agree with. And not just to read the positive. Make this note, you cannot live on mental candy. Just like you can't feed your children ice cream all the time and hope that they will be healthy. So you cannot live on mental candy. Someone says, well, I just read the positive stuff. That's not enough. And the reason is because you need to know both sides of the issue. So start your library like I did, age 25. I mentioned in another seminar, haven't read everything in my library, but I feel smarter just walking in it, right? And 
smart enough to buy it. Now I got to be smart enough to read it all. Then I got to be smart enough to sort through and decide what's valuable. So make that the next part now. In part of personal development for the mind, you got to sort through what you read, what you see, and what you hear, and decide which of all of that is valuable for you to try and do and master. This is where being a student comes in, not a follower, but a student. You read one book on good health and it says, do what this book says, you'll live forever. You read the next book on health and nutrition and it says, if you do what that first book says, you'll die young. So someone says to me, Mr. Owen, which of these books should I follow? Jot this down, neither one. Don't be a follower, read both books and make up your own mind. Here's what's important in the final analysis. One of the best phrases for the day, I got this from my Canadian friend, Harold Dyke, who gave it to me and I've used it all these years. Here's what he said, make sure what you finally do is the product of your own conclusion. Make sure what you finally do is the product of your own conclusion. Meaning you don't just follow, but you listen to both sides of the argument. You listen to the controversy. You try to master the points on both sides or three sides or whatever. Then you start charting your own course. It doesn't make you, doesn't say you'll make always the right decision on what course to take or what to do. You can refine as you go, but make sure that what you do is the product of your own conclusions, conclusions from the debate, conclusion from what makes the best sense to you to try. Now, jot this down. Also give yourself a chance to change. Some things I held on to that I thought this was it, this was it. I'm telling you, after a while I gave it up, found out it wasn't it. So give yourself a chance to change, refine your philosophy, refine your direction. If you'll give yourself a chance to do that, here's what will happen down the road a ways. A new door will open that you haven't discovered before. Give yourself a chance to change, reevaluate. So let your library be a testimonial of your dedicated interest in accelerated personal development, that you will read whatever you have to read, you will hear whatever you must hear, and you will watch and see whatever you must see in order to make your life refined and worthwhile and achieve all of your purposes. It takes a lot of effort to learn. It takes a lot of effort to grow. It takes a lot of effort to decide and debate. But jot this down, it's all worth the price. Whatever stimulates you to think, whatever stimulates you to wonder, whatever stimulates you to react or even to debate, even if you hear something, you say, well, that's not right. See, that's still valuable. It means you're awake. It means you're alert. It means you're alive. It means your mind is ready to take on something, whether it's agreeable or not agreeable, something right, something wrong. Who cares what it is? We've got to listen to a variety of voices. And some are going to come from the left and some are going to come from the right. And some are going to come from mysterious sources. And some will try to entice you with all kinds of stuff, but that's okay. Just so you're alive and alert and awake, ready to process anything that comes your way. Take the best of it and make it beneficial for you. So that tomorrow you walk with a stronger step. Next month, you see a clearer vision.